Hey everyone, how's it going? Cloud here, and welcome to my guys on the Defender of Varrock quest. Now, for this quest you need to have the following requirements, so you must have completed these quests. Shield of Arav, the Knight's Sword, Demon Slayer, Temple of Ikov, Family Crest, and What Lies Below. Also, Ring Mysteries, Garden of Tranquility, and Creature of Thinking Strain. And you're going to need these skills, level 51 agility which can be boosted and level 51 hunter which may also be boosted, level 54 smithing which cannot be boosted and level 59 mining which may be boosted. You also will have needed to have claimed the Varrock Museum Kudos from Historian Minas for completing the Shield of Arav. So if you're not too sure on how to do that, go to the Varrock Museum and go on the first floor and you should see a man nearby called Historian Minas and you can talk to him and tell him about your quest and you'll receive Kudos for um, informing him about what's happened and you also get rewards. So all you need to do is make sure you've told him what happened during the Shield of Arav quest. You'll also need a decent combat level in order to fight 6 uh, armoured zombies, level 86. That's it for the requirements, now onto the items. So you'll need a spade, the one in your tool belt does not work, so you need to have a physical one in your inventory. You'll also need some form of light source, um, blue right ore which can be obtained during the quest and I'll make sure I mention when you need to acquire that. And also weapon, armor, and food to fight six of the level 86 armored zombies. Um, for recommended items, if you bring a red berry pie, you can get an extra 1,000 spiffing experience. Um, an emergency teleport may come in handy if you think you're going to get um, killed, um, especially against the armored zombie part. Uh, and also, if you have a salve amulet enchanted or a normal salve amulet, that can also help fight against the armored zombies. But like I said, they're only recommendations. You don't have to bring those with you. The only other items you may need are any items that's going to boost the skills that I mentioned. So for example, if your hunter is not level 51, uh, you'll need to bring a hunter potion in order to boost it. Obviously you'll need to make sure you have the minimum level required for that boost to work. And the same applies for the agility, with a summer pie perhaps, and again with the mining. So that's it for the requirements and items, now onto the quest starting points. So we're currently at the Varrock Lodestone, which can be accessed via the Lodestone network, and from here the quest starting point is in Varrock Palace, and we need to head to the Northwest Tower and go to the second floor to find a man called Captain Rovin. So if you just watch where I'm going, I'll lead you there now. So once you're here, you should find Captain Rovin, talk to him and he'll tell you that zombies have been seen organising in the wilderness and he calls for his scout Heartwind, who reports a shadowy figure and an army of zombies in the graveyard of shadows. Rovin will ask you and Heartwind to investigate further. Now before moving on, make sure you don't have a familiar summoned, otherwise Heartwind will not follow you outside. Also, if you do happen to lose Heartwind for any reason during the quest, he can be found back here in the Varrock Palace. So after speaking to both Rovin and Hartwin, Hartman will teleport you both to the Graveyard of Shadows. Now for this duration of the quest, the area is not part of the wilderness and therefore you are safe from anyone trying to uh, PvP or kill you uh, during this moment until you go out of the actual quest area, otherwise then you are at risk. So you want to enter the nearby graveyard and then talk to Hartwin and a cutscene will show, showing a trail of zombie tracks leading away from the graveyard and after the cutscene you and Hartwin are standing near some footprints. So this bit is similar to how you track when hunting, use your hunter skills to follow the zombie footsteps. Um, if you adjust your graphics display to safe mode it will make the track stand out a lot easier but you shouldn't have too much difficulty finding them in the first place. So you will need level 51 hunter only to uncover the first set of tracks and then after that point uh, it should only be a couple of times that you may need to boost again so don't worry about having to constantly boost your hunter to the required level. So basically what you need to do here is keep inspecting nearby bushes, trees, tree stumps, mushrooms and bones to uncover the tracks. Uh, you may encounter several dead ends and places where the trail seems to go in circles. The idea though is you're going to be heading towards the uh, temple and if you open up your map you'll see there's a little uh, enclosure with some lava surrounding it and you'll sort of also see the icon for a prayer altar and basically you want to try and keep searching things to make the footsteps lead in that general direction. 
Like I said though, don't expect it just to go in a straight line as it will kind of go all over the place a little bit. Just keep searching all the um, items and objects around you and eventually you should start um, getting on track. Eventually you'll uncover a grubby key along the tracks in a thicket of trees and then you want to continue tracking until the footprints end at the entrance to the Chaos Temple. You'll know when you've found the end of the trail as it will say the trail seems to stop and reaches rockier ground. Hopefully you can find out what happens to the zombies in this area. So like I say, keep searching all the uh, above mentioned sort of uh, areas until you've reached the Chaos uh, Temple and you've got that bit of dialogue and I shall speak to you in a few moments when you've done that. So once the trail has led to the Chaos Temple, you want to speak to Simon, who's nearby. Um, he'll be carrying a large sack on his back and asking about the army of zombies. And he'll tell you they walked into the tra uh, nearby trapdoor behind the altar. So you want to use the grubby key on the trapdoor just south of the altar in the Chaos Temples. Uh, and then you want to enter the tunnels, which are under the temple. So once you're down the ladder you want to run north to get out of range of the armoured zombies and you'll see there's a balcony and you want to choose the look over balcony option and you'll see a cutscene. So after the cutscene we now need to get bottles of red mist to pass through the next few doors as they behave like keys. So head west through the dungeon corridor and pick up three bottles on the ground uh, that are around the armoured zombies. What you then need to do is attack three armoured zombies and when a zombie dies there will be a red mist that appears and you can store it by using your bottle on it. Uh, if you're in combat it might stop you from doing this. If you turn auto retaliate off and then just keep clicking the red mist with your bottle you should eventually uh, put the red mist inside. Like I said at the beginning of the quest, uh, if you're having difficulty with the armoured zombies and you've got a salve amulet, that will help as it boosts damage against undead. So with the filled bottles of red mist, you want to go through the first door to the west and you'll see another cutscene. So after the cutscene you went to head north up the corridor and kill three zombies again to refill your bottles with red mist using the same method we did before and then go east and open the second door. After this the bottles won't be required any further and can be dropped if you wish. You then want to follow the corridor east to another balcony to the south and again choose to look over balcony option to view another cutscene. So you will see that there's a zombie army ready to attack Varrock and realise on the gravity of the situation you now need to return to Captain Rovin and tell him what you and Hartwin have learned about the zombie army. Make sure you have completed the cutscene though and that you've actually told yourself to return to Captain Rovin otherwise you'll have to uh, return to review that cutscene. So when ready you want to head back to Varrock Palace by either using the Lodestone Network or the uh, Varrock Teleport Tablet that was provided to you. Once you're back in Varrock, you want to return to Captain Rovin, who we spoke to at the beginning of the quest. So after talking to Captain Rovin, he'll ask you to speak with Fergo, one of the surviving Imkando Dwarfs, to learn how to use the Shield of a Rav to defend Varrock. So we now need to head to Fergo's home, which is north of Mudskipper Point. Uh, the quickest way to get here is if you teleport to the Port Serim Lodestone via the Lodestone Network. Once there, keep heading south until you reach a small hut and you should see Fergo the Dwarf nearby. So once you find Fergo and speak to him, he'll suggest you find the Great Lost Dwarven Hall which contains a sacred forge and he gives you a scrap of paper with the coordinates on it. Now if you don't have blu eye or with you yet, you want to head down into the nearby dungeon which is just nearby and follow the cave all the way through until you reach the icy area and then you should see some blu eye ore rocks available to mine and you want to make sure you get yourself a piece of blu eye ore. So once you've obtained the blue right ore, we now need to make our way to Ice Mountain. Now the quickest way to get here is if we teleport to the Edgeville Lodestone via the Lodestone Network. 
once you arrive you want to go past the monastery and then you should be able to head to uh, Ice Mountain. Now there's a specific spot that you need to dig on, uh, you can use a sextant to obtain uh, what coordinates you're standing on, however uh, the same spot is for every player so if you just watch carefully where I'm standing this is where you need to dig. So once you're making sure you stand on this spot, you then want to dig with your spades and if you dug in the correct location, you'll get the message do you dig a hole in the snow and under the snow is a lot of rubble. So you want to continue to dig using the spade until you get the message, you'll need something better than a spade to get through your rubble. And now you need to mine out the churned up snow, this is what requires 59 mining to use the boost now if need be. And then once you clear the rubble, you then want to enter the hole in the ground. So you'll now arrive in some dwarven ruins and you should see a blind dwarf nearby called Romano and he'll tell you more about himself and he explains how to use the sacred forge. If you brought a red berry pie with you he'll ask if you can have some and will give you a thousand sniffing experience in exchange for it. What you need to do after speaking to him is use the blue eye ore on the sacred forge and then talk to the blind dwarf again and you'll now see a dreamlike cutscene of what is about to take place. So after the cutscene you want to now return to Varok Lodestone via the Lodestone network and then head straight away to the palace. So upon entering the palace grounds you'll see another cutscene of the armoured zombies that are taking over the palace and overrunning the guards. So you want to avoid engaging the zombies and run to the second floor of the northwest tower to talk to Captain Rovin again. Tell Rovin what you learned of the secret forge and he tells you to check the library records and will give you the shield of a rav. So climb down the stairs and go into the library and talk to Roldo and he'll tell you about the old census and an old document that a zombie knocked to the floor. Against the north wall of the library look out for an open book on a lectern and this is the Varrock census and you want to read it to find out the names and occupants of citizens of Varrock. Then you want to search the scrolls on the floor which is near the tipped over desk to obtain the list of elders. Now with the Shield of Arab in our inventory, we know you need to go speak to a few people to find out if any of them are able to wield the Shield of Arav. So the first person we need to speak to is King Rold, who is in the main sort of part of the uh, Varrock Palace. So if you just run over to this room here, you should see him nearby and you want to talk to him and get him to try the Shield. Once you've spoken to King Rold, you then want to speak to the Royal Advisor, who is just next to the King. After that you need to speak to Surprising, who is one of King Rold's knights from the Demon Slayer quest and you should see him near this room over here. Then you want to speak to Creator Haig Halen, who is the creator of Varrock Museum, so you need to head over there and he'll be on the ground floor. And then you need to speak to Horvick the Smith, who is the owner of Horvick's armor shop, which is just near where the Varrock Fountain is. So each of them will wield the shield of a Rav, but none will be able to activate its magical properties. However, one of them um, will tell you they are not a blood descendant, which is different for each player as well. So that's why I advise you just go and speak to all five people. So once you've spoken to all of them, we now need to go speak to Demimphius, who is the guy we spoke to to do the family crest quest. You'll find him in the most uh, northern house of the gated off area south of Varrock's east bank, so just watch where I'm going once again. Once you speak to Demimphius, he'll wield the shield and it will respond to him, and it is revealed that he is the uh, descendant of the founder of Varrock, and then a cutscene will take place where they use the shield of Arath to destroy the zombies. So after the cutscene you'll find yourself next to Captain Rovin and you want to talk to Rovin to uh, end the quest and he will thank you and it will come up congratulations you completed the Defender of Varrock quest. You're awarded 2 quest points, 15,000 Hunter experience, 10,000 Smithing experience, you would have also got an additional 1,000 Smithing experience for giving uh, the Blind Dwarf a red berry pie and you can come back and do that at any point as well I believe. Uh, you would have got 10,000 Mining and 10,000 Defense experience, 2,000 Agility experience, access to the Chaos Temple dungeon where you can kill armoured zombies and they count as uh, a slayer assignment if you get zombies assigned. Uh, you'll also get 5 kudos in the Varrock Museum and a thousand experience lamp if you speak to Historian Minas on the first floor. 2 treasure hunter keys and 2 hearts of ice. 
So overall, pretty easy quest. I reckon the only sort of time consuming part you'll have is just finding the uh, zombie footsteps uh, as that takes a little while to lead to the Chaos Temple. But other than that, the quest is pretty simple and the rewards from it are quite decent. The armoured zombies are quite a handy uh, enemy to fight as you've obviously got the prayer altar um, just outside so you can keep using constant prayer to train against them. Uh, and also there's no risk of being killed in the wilderness uh, if you speak to... Um, Heartwin, any point in the Varok Palace, he'll take you back to the Chaos Temple. So you don't have to worry about going through the wilderness on your own. Just come here, speak to him, and he'll take you directly there. And of course, this quest is required in order to complete other ones, which will eventually unlock you the Ancient Curses, which I'm sure the main majority of you are doing this quest for. But yeah, I don't think you'll run into any problems following my guide. However, if you do get stuck, leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll help you out as best as I can. If not, thank you for watching. Please make sure you like, favourite, comment, subscribe and don't forget to share with your friends. Cheers guys, bye bye.